Hey guys, today we are going to be having a look at Chris and his loving with Andrew Tate. Now, Chris has been posting a lot more on TikTok recently, and uh, I find it quite brave. So, well done, Chris. Very brave going of yourself. He's coming across very cocky and very arrogant in all those videos that he's posting, saying how amazing he's doing and everything like that. Andrew Tate would be proud of him. You're going to lose a lot of friends when you get serious about your life goals. That's why a Bugatti has two seats and a bus has 30. However, Andrew Tate doesn't have the checkered pass that you do. And that's saying something. Now, uh, on TikTok, it is full to the brim of the kids who used to watch the Inghams as a channel right so when he goes on tiktok he opens himself up to an entire world of kids who used to watch him and no longer do because for two reasons one they they realize what he did and what he is and um just they think of him as a joke right it's all over tiktok he is a joke and people have largely forgot forgotten about him but he's putting himself back out there and the kids are slowly coming onto the site, just stumbling across his videos. And they leave comments such as these. This one person simply states, motivational. And reading between the lines, I'd say that was quite sarcastic. I reckon. And they've tagged one of one of their friends, and that's what happens frequently. They tag their friends, so their friends come over to have a look and have a laugh at Chris. And this one says, nice beanie and greasy hat. You know, that's classic, classic. <laughs> but the point is that he's opening himself up again to all this hatred. And, uh, you know, the kids, they're not going to hold back on the words that they come out with. You know, you can't stop them. That's what they do. The kids, the young people... They're going to say things that Chris may not be uh, comfortable with. But uh, he's, I guess he's grown a thick skin over the years. You know, all these things that have been said. So, you know, all power to him. However, you know, then you've got people who are commenting things like this. You said you S.A. kids, I swear. And then tagged her friend again and... Uh, I'm not sure if this was overlooked by Chris or what, but what this is actually saying is you said you sexually abuse kids and <laughs> Chris has left it up. Don't know if he knows, but <laughs> this is the, the point. You know, I don't necessarily agree with what they're saying about him, but this is what's going to happen all over TikTok because there were so many rumours about him as well which have been largely forgotten about and most people just remember him as that um, child groomer and that's what he'll forever be to the younger generation and that's where all their fans have gone because <laughs> that's what they, they think of him. So as I said, very, very brave opening yourself back up to all this, Chris. I've got to say brave. Now, Andrew Tate, for all his misgivings, <laughs> you know, isn't quite on the same length or scale as you. I don't think he's been accused of child grooming. I'll have to get back to you on that one, but uh, you never know with that guy. But I'm not going to sit here now and try and prove that Chris supports Andrew Tate you know we all know he does I'm not gonna sit here and try and prove it because we have the proof right here he doesn't mind he doesn't mind he doesn't care anymore so this person commented simply Tate clown 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 and Chris replied long Anyone who says Tate is a clown without properly researching him as a person, not the mainstream media version of him, is the clown. And clown, clown, clown emojis. So there you have it. Chris Ingham admits that he is a massive Andrew Tate fan. And why wouldn't he be? You know, Chris is idol has long since been Tate ever since Tate got banged up for, uh, I don't know, rape and um, assault and, and trafficking and stuff like that. You know, what's not to love? What's not to love? Anyway, 
anybody that says the words mainstream media is, um, you know, the devil or whatever, right, immediately I think, what an absolute prat. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it's like, um, it's like those people who think that the the Twin Towers was um, blown up by the American government, that type of thing, you know, the conspiracy theorists and stuff like that. I cannot stand conspiracy theorists, okay, right? I think that usually, usually, the most obvious option, the most obvious reason for anything is usually correct, okay? You try digging and looking for other ex explanations about things, how the government are against us and how the government are watching us and the government are doing this and the government are doing that. They're not. <laughs> They're really not, okay? It's just people spreading misinformation and conspiracies around the internet and you end up with people like Andrew Tate and Chris Singham. That's what happens. So... Chris is a massive, massive Tate fan, as we all predicted, and we all fairly well knew. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he doesn't mind admitting it, which is even worse, in my opinion. <laughs> so that person came back and said, "How did you research him?" Because that's a fair question, isn't it? Chris is saying that people are not doing the research so where did chris get his information from <laughs> and it gets worse go watch any single podcast with credible people like tucker carlson candace owens anyone that isn't mainstream media educate yourself now i've seen the podcast with tucker carlson a while ago and people like that are very much anti-establishment and they think that everything that the mainstream media put out is a falsity and they have all the all the answers to everything they don't i'm sorry they just don't since today andrew tate suddenly the most famous man on the internet and then all of a sudden gone from the internet a few days ago banned by virtually every social media app on the internet around the world for reasons that no one explained and that are still not clear. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, that is um, Chris's solution. Go to credible sources. Now, you saying that anyone that's not mainstream media... Now, how about these ones, Chris? These people here, right? <laughs> and these clips... Breathe for the rest of the day. If you don't end up in a fucking grave, if you want to sleep in the house where I have to pay the fucking bills, you're gonna shut the fuck up, you little prick. Because this is my fucking world, and you exist in my world. If you think you're smart enough to live on your own, fucking run away from home. But if you don't want to play that game, shut the fuck up. How are women allowed to drive? Single organization that is primarily run by females is just a fucking bitch fest anyway. Well, Andrew, why do you have a machete next to your bed? And my answer is simple. Why wouldn't I have a machete next to my bed? So yeah, someone knocks on my door in the middle of the night, I have to go answer the door, instantly pick up my machete. When you put your headphones in, you are a fucking target. You are losing one of your most important sensory perceptions. I'll tell you something, man, I've been jumped four times. And every time I was jumped, I didn't see it coming, but I heard it coming. There's no female alive, even with a machete, that would stand a chance against the immense power I possess. Yep, these clips were put out by the great Top G himself, right? Your hero, your mentor, your boss, right? Andrew Tate, he put out those himself. That is not the mainstream media. That is not the mainstream media twisting the narrative or telling a false information or anything. That is... Words that Tate himself said. You can see his words, his lips moving. He himself put them out. And his uh, minions, the ones who are paying his way, and the ones who are paying him, and that he's paying, and whatever, right? 
those ones on TikTok and they spread it all around. They're the ones that have um, spread all this information and that was him spreading the information around. So where do you stand on that one if it was Tate himself who put that information into the world and yet you're saying it's not true? How can that possibly be, Christopher? Chris goes on to say, the news isn't free because they want you to know stuff that's real. It's free to control and influence with fake news. So basically he's saying that uh, if you want real news, you have to go and pay for it. So the people who uh, uh, apparently hold the key to all the uh, real news um, are charging for it. Who would have thought it, right? Who would have thought it? (laughs) Fabulous stuff. So Chris has gone on to do all these insane things on on TikTok at the moment, put out some incredible videos, but his arrogance is shining right the way through, and it's really horrible to watch, to be honest. The best advice anyone ever gave me was two words. You can't. And you know what my response was? Two words. Watch me. As I said, such arrogance, isn't it? Such arrogance. He thinks he's this top G and high-powered businessman now who has such influence over the world. And he's really, really getting off on it. Don't like it, to be honest, Chris. Don't like it. It's a very ugly trait. And uh, I don't see how Sarah can put up with you, actually, if I'm being honest. But then again, you just put Sarah down on a constant basis. Andrew Tate would be proud of your prowess when it comes to women, especially the ones you can keep down there below your level. Always remember, you will never be criticized by someone who is doing more than you. You will only be criticized by someone doing less. Well, that's my favourite one. Yep, you won't be criticised by people who are doing more than you. Only people who are doing less. Now, I would have to disagree with what you're saying there, Chris, because, yes, from certain perspectives, some people wouldn't criticise you um, if they were doing better than you. And most people who criticize you are doing worse right however in your case i would have to flip that because most people will criticize you personally chris because of who you are okay now i get if you are very high powered and you're successful and things like that people are generally drawn to that to criticize them right um it's I don't want to use the word jealousy, but it kind of comes into that that category. But when it comes to people like you, Christopher, you're just not a nice person. And you've done things which people don't agree with. And therefore, that is why they criticise you. Not because uh, they are better or worse than you. Just because you are you. End of. Block you, huh? Yeah, I think that's far, far better. Don't you think, Chris? Far better. Anyway, yeah, this is Chris Ingham and his attempt at being, um, what shall we say, an idiot? We know he's an idiot. But he wants to be an Andrew Tate, and we all know what Andrew Tate is. He is a bit of a twat, and he treats women like crap, and he doesn't like women, and he thinks that women are only good for one thing, and he thinks that women are there to to be his slave, essentially. And yet Chris has not just a wife, not just one, not two, not three, but four daughters. Four daughters with one on the way. Would you believe? Bring in another daughter into a world where um, Chrissingham 
has, and his standards for womanhood is, um, yeah, they must be chained to the kitchen sink and um, there for whatever pleasure the man puts out, right? And then you've got the the boy. You've got you've got one boy who you are teaching to um, treat women in exactly the same way that you treat women. That is fabulous, Chris. Fabulous, I've got to say. <laughs> I don't, you know, you're a disgrace because not only are you you have all these mindsets, but you also have your kids, but you also have kids in your comment section who are listening to your crap really really listening and um i don't think if if it was my child watching you i don't think i'd be entirely happy with that okay i'm just saying i wouldn't be happy now you should put up a disclaimer beforehand saying that your content is not suitable for children i think that would be the best thing for it now before we go i'd like to uh, run you through <laughs> what something i read on chris's book recently because I haven't finished his book yet and I'm I'm wading my way through it you know I can't read at 600 words per hour or whatever right 600 pages per six hours 100 pages an hour it's not what Isabel can do anyway right so uh, I, f I thought this was quite comical <laughs> so Chris says this in his book YouTube monetization is a very lucrative way to make money if you can get the views on your videos. As most of you know by now, YouTube monetization was the beginning of this journey for my family and I. We have been fortunate enough to have earned a huge amount of money through YouTube over the last seven years. Um, well, you fail to mention, obviously, that it was your kids who made you the money. Now, I do wonder if you would point that out to your hero, Andrew Tate, because for all Tate's flaws, I do get the impression that he likes to be the man and uh, bring home all the, the money, you know, be the breadwinner, if you will. And um, yet uh, you are there and your kids are the breadwinners and you do, you do fuck all. So, you know... <laughs> I wonder if you could just sort of disclaim that a little bit, possibly. On just one channel, our main vlog channel, The Ingham Family, it has never generated a lower monthly income less than £16,000. That's in January too, when CPM, cost per thousand views, is at an all-time low for the year. The CPM steadily gets higher and higher as the year progresses, up to an all-time high in November and December, which will usually see our main vlog channel in excess of £30,000 per month. There you go, you have it from the horse's mouth. They earned £30,000 allegedly in uh, December and January, and uh, December and November. So, um, but they don't earn less than £16,000. But I guess... You know, assuming this is correct, I guess everything is relative, right? Because uh, the amount of vehicles that they have to run, the amount of um, big houses they have to run, well, one big house, but they have it to run, and they're never there. So, you know, that's just a wasted piece of land, really, isn't it, if you're never there? Anyway, yeah, so that's interesting, isn't it? So another thing that Chris said, which was highly amusing, I feel. Now, one thing to consider about YouTube is that ad revenue per view skyrockets in the months October to December. The whole run up to Christmas advertisers pay a massive premium compared to the rest of the year to advertise their products, which means that the owners of the YouTube channels, the ads showcase on, earn extra too we always joke about december it's our hardest work time of the year between all of our businesses but our one vlog channel on youtube earns us enough every december to take the rest of the year off work from everything else 
<laughs> so Chris reckons that he can uh, he can take an entire year off work just from his earnings in December alone. <laughs> My God, that gave me a chuckle. That get, did indeed cheer me up. Thank you very much for that, for that Chris. That was funny. I'd have to say though, I'd argue that um, you say that your December is your hardest working month of the year. For vlogs, maybe. Maybe, right? Because you've got to put some effort into it. You've got to think of some Christmassy type things to do. However, half the time you're away, you're on holiday. So at what point do you get to, um, you know, sort all this, like, stuff out? The, you know, these other websites that you claim to have or these drop shipping sites that you claim to have. What, when exactly do you do all this work? When you're on your, your holidays or when... We don't see anything, right? I know what you're going to say, that we only see 20 minutes of your life every day. But, you know, we can tell, we can see, right? You're not that busy. You, you go away. You get an influx of money and then you bugger off on holiday. That's generally what you do. Speaking of which, when is Sarah's uh, baby and twat coming back? Because, you know, it's the holiday season coming up and uh, that's her busiest time of the year. And it's shut. <laughs> the, the website shut. Anyway, there you go. So I hope all that gave you a little bit of a giggle. The fact that Chris claims that he can live for a year off his uh, December wages alone and everything else that he claims is uh, fabulous. But uh, all in all, he is um, having this amazing Andrew Tate loving at the moment. You can tell by everything that he's doing and all his views of, of life and all his actions and the way he carries himself is straight out of the Andrew Tate playbook and it's it's firstly it's funny to watch right it is funny to see Chris um behaving like this because you know it's not normal it really isn't but it's also sad you know because it's it's not good for his family you know and I include Sarah in that she's about to um give another baby in life god bless them all right <laughs> So, you know, and you've got Chris acting like this. It's insanity. I'm sorry, insanity. But it's always good to show him up for what he is, an absolute moron. So uh, if you have anything to add to this, please let me know in the comments down below. Give the video a massive thumbs up and subscribe if you are brand new. And I'll see you again soon in another video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Um,